Cardiovascular Consultants presents its Patient Education Series. Dr. Dennis Donahue discusses stress testing. Patients are seen, usually for evaluation of chest discomfort, and we do some non-invasive testing to see if we can get to the bottom of the problem. Coronary artery disease, of course, is the disease where you have atherosclerosis that builds up in the coronary artery, and the narrowing of the coronary arteries is what leads to chest pains and eventually can lead to heart attack in the worst situation, of course. There has been great inroads over the last several years about doing testing on patients for the last 10 years, and we're reducing the risks and sudden death markedly in this country. The first test I'd like to talk about is our exercise stress test, or the routine exercise ECG stress test. This is the oldest test we've been using for 40 years, where we exercise a patient on the treadmill, watch their electrocardiogram when they exercise, and look for changes specifically in what's called the ST segments to see if there's a suggestion that there is narrowing of the arteries. Usually you have to have narrowing of the arteries of at least 50% of the lumen before we see changes. Um, this test was the only test we had for many years, and it has, it has some problems. Um, you have to have essentially a normal electrocardiogram before you can use this test so that you can gauge from normal to abnormal. Um, the, the other problem is that frequently this test will be abnormal by criteria, yet we won't find any heart disease. This is particularly true in women. This test is difficult to use in women. They seem to have this problem with falsely abnormal tests very frequently. Um, the test sometimes misses a, a large number of patients, and so it's not as sensitive as we'd like to detect disease, and it's not as accurate as, we, as we'd like. Um, we don't use this test very frequently anymore, uh, except in very low risk situations, or if we're looking for evaluation, evaluating blood pressure with exercise, or looking for arrhythmias, we might use this test. What's been developed since that time are some other tests, uh, particularly um, a stress echo, or uh, exercise echocardiography, we call it. An echo everybody knows about is the uh, study where we take an echo, we put it to the chest, and we get pictures of the heart muscle contracting and the valves. It's like a sonogram of a baby. We just put it where the heart is, and we can actually watch the heart muscle contract. If there's, if there's a problem with the arteries that feed this muscle, when one exercises, the muscle will not be able to function optimally. We look at the walls at rest, and then we exercise them. And at peak exercise, we echo them again to see how that muscle is working. Normally, the ventricles should get smaller and all the walls should come in. If we see some of the walls not moving well, that would suggest that the arteries that serve those walls may be narrowed, and that may be why the patient's having chest pain or they may have coronary disease. Um, this gets around the problem with the EKG being abnormal because we don't really have to pay attention to the EKG. We're looking at a, at a much more accurate test than just the EKG. One of the problems we have with this test is not everybody is easy to get an echo on. Sometimes uh, the chest configurations or the size of the patient make getting accurate images of the heart muscle contracting difficult. In that setting, um, we frequently move, we, we move on uh, to nuclear stress testing. Nuclear stress testing really came to fore about 15 years ago, and it's been an exceedingly important adjunct for us because it's probably the most accurate. A stress echo probably captures 85% of people, but a nuclear stress test probably captures 90% of people. The difference of this test from the other ones is that we actually inject something in a vein. Everybody thinks it's a dye, but it's not a dye. It's a radioactive substance that has a very short half-life. We inject the radioactive substance, get a picture of the blood flow in the heart at rest, and then we exercise the patient. And then we'll take, then we do another injection at peak exercise, and we'll look at the blood flow at peak exercise. This has been a, a really important test for us, and it's helped us reduce uh, death and, and uh, disability from heart disease greatly. Uh, we can actually look at ejection fraction and how well a muscle works with this test also. And it's been very, very valuable over the last few years. What's really important is that we've been able to use these tests 
to reassure patients that the symptoms that they're having are actually not due to coronary artery disease in the majority of cases and to leave anxiety and um, uh, let them get back to a normal life. For more information, please visit our patient education page at www.cvcheartcare.com.